Today we're looking at the eye and we're looking at similarities with the camera. So very quickly I'm going to whiz through the structure of the eye and then we'll compare it to what happens with the I'm camera. I'm going to start off with the lens. Now the lens in the human changes shape and if I draw it like that that's pretty much how it looks. Actually when you do an eye dissection it's really quite hard and tough it's quite interesting and we've got the outer part of the eye which is called your cornea. Now, most of the light is focused by the cornea and the lens is like the fine focus that just does the final bit. We change the shape of the lens because the lens has these things on it called suspensory ligaments. And attached to that is some muscle and the muscle can contract. So if this is the cornea, then you've got the white part of the eye, and then it goes around. We've got the optic nerve, I'm just drawing this really uh, quickly there. We've got the optic nerve, comes all the way around. Oops, that's rubbish. We've got the white part of the eye, and it goes like this. Now that's a really poorly shaped eyeball, but you get the idea. In fact, I'm just gonna pause it while I sort that out. So I've just redrawn the eye, because the other one was a bit rubbish. But anyway, let's have a little look. We've got our cornea here, and that's the clear outer part of your eye. It's transparent, and light's gonna pass through there. It's gonna come through here. This is the lens. This is gonna focus it on this bit here, which is the retina. I'm just gonna add some labels. So I've added some labels. So again, we've got our cornea, we've got our lens, we've got our ciliary muscle, which is attached to the suspensory ligaments. And at year eight, all you need to know is that that can change the shape of the lens. We can have a short, fat lens, or we can have a long, thin lens. And we need to look at how that will change the image. We've got our retina that goes all the way around the outside. So if you imagine like a coconut, a coconut with the white part on the inside, that would be your retina. And it's made up of two types of cell. It's made up of rods, which are responsive to light and dark, and it's made up of cones, which are responsive to colour. So that's easy to remember, cones and colour. And what you find is, at the right, at the back of your retina, that's when you have a high concentration of cones, um, and because that's where you focus the light when you look directly at something. Now the thing I'm missing from this diagram is the iris. The iris is the coloured part of your eye and it kind of comes down here and it creates, it creates the pupil which lets light pass through it. So if I look now at this part of the eye and I'm looking here, this is your iris and you might have a blue iris or you might have a brown iris or a green or a mixture or whatever and the hole in the middle is your pupil and an experiment you can do at home is you can get a mirror you can get in the dark you can get a torch and then if you shine the torch in your eye you'll see that your pupils get really 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 small and if you turn the torch off then there's less light going in your eye and your pupil gets really, really, really big. And the reason why is because you don't want too much light entering your eye because you might damage these very sensitive cells at the back of the eye. So what else? So these, the iris has muscles and it has circular muscles and it has longitudinal muscles. And so when these longitudinal muscles contract, they get shorter. All muscles, when they contract, get shorter. If that gets shorter, then it opens up the pupil and allows more light in. That would happen in dull, dim light when you want to see more. And when you go outside into the break time and it's really bright outside, what's gonna happen is your circular muscles then contract to close the pupil to protect your eyes. And that's why sometimes you'll, it'll happen really, really quickly and you'll walk out and your eyes will hurt almost as they do it. So let's just have a little look at how this relates to this model here. Okay, so here's my cornea. This is the um, transparent part and that does most of the focusing, most of the bending of light. And this white, tough outer area is called your sclera. 
Now, later on in year 10, you do an eye dissection and you'll find actually how tough this actually is. How tough this outer layer is because when you try to cut it with a knife, it's actually really, really hard. So one of the common things you'll have heard your mum or your granny shout or whatever is, watch that, you'll have someone's eye out uh, or you'll damage your eyes, but actually it's really hard to damage your eyes. So if I take this off, we can see inside here, this would be the iris. This is some of this circular bit here. Here we've got the lens and here we've got the inside and you can see all the blood vessels on the inside there. So, okay, so remember that this is actually a physics lesson, so I'm not hanging on the biology too much. There's a lot more that I could say because obviously biology is a lot more interesting than mm -hmm. physics. But we could change the shape of our lens and that changes the refraction the bending of the light. So if you've got a short, fat lens like this, it bends the light a lot. We get some bending there, this is refraction, and then as light passes through, we get some bending there, and then it's gonna to come to a focal point, a focusing point here. And so when you're looking at something close, you are, your lens is really short and fat, and that, to create that short fat lens, your muscles have to contract, and that's why you can get eye strain if you're looking at something that's really, really, really close. If it's long and it's thin, bending of light is a lot less. And so therefore, the focal point is a lot further away. And that's why it's really relaxing for your eyes to look into the distance because you're not using the muscles that change the shape of your lens uh, to do that. And so that will relax your eyes. So what we're gonna do next is look at how that relates to okay, the camera. Let's have a look at the difference between the eye and the camera. There's similarities and there's differences. So if we look at the camera here, we can see that there's a lens and here we've got a lens. And also, if we look at it, there's an aperture, there's an opening. That's what it's called in a camera for the light to go through. And here we've got the pupil, that's what controls the light going through. Both of them create an inverted image, an image that's upside down. So if you look at the camera there, the image, if this was a candle, the top of the candle would be the flame here, and that would be seen by the film upside down there and the bottom of the candle would be there and so it would be upside down there and that image is captured on a film or a memory card in fact what's quite funny is that not that long ago we had films for cameras and the students have just been saying now oh yeah my granny told me about those like it was a million years ago and it's not so um what else the eye doesn't remember images it's got an optic nerve which sends it off to the brain and it's your brain's interpretation of it that allows you to see um, optical illusions as you do because your brain, just like the camera, receives an inverted image on the back of the retina but the inverted image is also very, very small and your brain turns it the right way up. So there's a lot, although your eye does a lot of work, your brain does a lot too. So what else have we got going on there that's similar? We've talked about the aperture, which is the opening. In, in the eye, it's the pupil. In the camera, it's the opening. Oh, I know. When we talk about the lens uh, in the human, in the human eye, it changes shape to focus the light. Whereas in a camera, it can't change shape. It moves forwards and backwards to get the position so that it focuses the image on the memory card or the film or the area at the back there.